Hey guys, today we're going to be trying to replicate the Blender's color ramp node with shaders. Now, uh, I think that this is going to be a fantastic exercise because uh, this really helps us understand how the shader node system works in Blender and we can use the same functionality as some of the nodes that are in that software. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop into Blender and I have this uh, story scene. Uh, so. Um, this is unimportant, you don't need to follow along with this, but essentially what I have here is we have this texture coordinates. It gives me the UVs and I can uh, separate the X component of that. So this is essentially UV.X and I'm plugging that into our base color. That's, that's what I'm doing. And we get this pattern, right? So uh, that's all that there is to it. And here inside VS Code, I have this repo, which you can download from the first link in the description. Uh, we have this SRC folder and app.js is where the main stuff happens. So if I scroll down a bit, uh, this is the main part of our code. We create a plane geometry, we create a shader material and we create a mesh and we add that to the scene. Now we have a vertex shader here, which I can open up. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we create a VUV and we set that VUV to UV. Uh, and this is just uh, a simple MVP model. Now, if you don't understand this and you want to learn the basics of shaders, I have a full three hour course here on YouTube. It's completely free. You can go ahead and watch that if you want to. Now, uh, I also have this fragment.jlsl file. So if I open that up, uh, we have this vuv.x uh, displayed. So uh, it's very simple. Now, if you run this with npm start, uh, you're going to get this result, which is the exact same thing that we have in Blender. So that's our basic setup that we're going to be using. But now here inside Blender, I can add this node that is called the color ramp. So you can plug it right here. And what this is going to do for now is nothing. We're going to get the exact same result because we have two points here. And um, based on the position of these two points, uh, it's going to position these points on this line that you can see right here. Now, uh, you can see as I move this point uh, in the right direction, uh, our pattern also changes. So uh, this gives us control over how we want our um, pattern to look like, uh, the color of it specifically. So here we have two points, which is this one and this one. And uh, both of these have two properties, which is important. One is a position, and the position is the position of this point on this line, which goes from zero to one. And this also has a color, so I can change this to red. And this is going to now give us a gradient that goes from black to red, from left to right. So this is all very simple stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to white. And what I'm going to do now is very simple. So I'm going to add a point in the middle, and uh, this is going to give me a point in the middle, and I'm going to turn this green. And you can see here we have three points, and this is going to give us this shape and uh, this point is positioned at 0.5. So we get black uh, going to green and from green we go to white as we move uh, from left to right. So we're going to try to replicate this exact functionality with as many points as we want. And now we can take inspiration from how this color ramp works. So uh, if I zoom in a bit, if I hover over this, it says add a new color stop to the color ramp. So uh, we have this color ramp and uh, these points are called color stops. Now, if I click on one of these, you can see this has a position. This means where uh, is this point placed on this line? I'm going to set it to 0.5 for the screen value. And the other component of this point is the color of it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back here and we're going to create a struct, call it color stop. And we're going to open up our curly braces and let's put a semicolon here. That's important. So let's uh, give this a value of color, like three color. And this also has a float position component. So that's our struct. And uh, now we need a function that takes in a factor, takes in this uh, list of color stops and gives us back a color. You see the output of this node is a color. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a function here. So like this, I'm going to create a vec3 color ramp. And this is going to return a vec3 because we want a color. So uh, the inputs of these is going to be color stop array of three elements for now. And we're going to call this colors. And the other component is going to be float. Sorry about that, float 
factor. So uh, this is gonna take colors and factor, and this is gonna return uh, a color. So we're just gonna write it like this for now. Now we don't know what this color is. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, and see how this works. So you can see we have these points and as you can see if we go from left to right we're gonna get from black to green and this is giving us a smooth gradient and essentially what this is doing is saying uh, from this point to this point I'm gonna give you a gradient uh, between these two points on the color ramp. So this is doing a lerp and uh, a lerp means a linear interpolation and you can set, uh, see this here because it says linear and uh, it's doing the exact same thing between this green value and this uh, white value here. And uh, basically what you don't see is you don't see a value changing from black to white. So essentially uh, we're having a lerp here, a linear interpolation here, and we have a, a linear interpolation here. So for each point, for each factor, uh, it's going to determine the points that are adjacent to it. So let's say we have this point in the middle here. And for this point, we're going to ask, uh, okay, what points are you adjacent to? And it's going to tell us these two points. And we're going to do a lerp be between these. And uh, it's going to be based on the position of the point we want. And so doing this in code is a little bit easier to understand. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back here. And we're going to do a for loop. So we're going to create a for. And it's going to be called i. And what we're going to do is we're going to check these points two by two. So I'm going to check these two points, see if our factor is in between them. And if it is, I'm going to do a lerp. That's that's my basic plan. So so in order to do that, I'm going to use the colors dot length function. This gives us the length of the array, which is three in this case. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get the colors I and this is going to give us a color stop. So I'm going to call this uh, color stop. Um, I don't know, current color. And that's it. Uh, we store it like this. And we also need the next color because we want to check two points. We want to check this and this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say color stop. Next color. And this is going to be set to colors I plus one. That's very simple. Now we have these two colors. We can check if the factor is in between them. So I'm going to create a Boolean call this um, is in between. Very simple names here. And I'm going to say if the current color dot position is less than or equal than the factor. This is uh, definitely higher than the factor is definitely higher than the current color dot position and uh, and and ampersand ampersand and uh, here if the factor is um, smaller than or equals uh, to the factor sorry the next color dot position this is definitely in between those two points now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna define an index so int index equals zero and I'm gonna keep track of the first color that is um, that our factor is in between. So if we determine the factor is in between these two color stops, uh, we can then say, okay, we only want the uh, index of this color stop because the index of this color stop is the index of this color stop plus one. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say index equals if is in between is uh, something, if it's something other than zero, what we're going to do is we're going to return um, i. And if it's not, we're going to just set this to index, which is zero. Uh, so that's that. And here we can keep track of which color stops uh, surround our factor. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And here uh, at the bottom, we're going to retrieve these values, these color stops uh, with the index that we hold. So I'm going to do color stop, call this current color. And this is going to be colors. And here we, we're going to get the index uh, very similar to the top here. So next color is going to be colors. Uh, and this is going to be index plus one. So we now have these two values. And now what we need to do is we need to do a lerp between them. So the way that we're going to do that is first we're going to get a range. So the range of the next color, 
uh, first call this a range, the range of the next color that position, uh, and subtract the current color dot position. So this is going to give us the distance between these two color stops. And this is going to give us the range. I can also call them distance if I want to. Uh, distance is a weird word, so range is fine, I think. And here what we can do now is I can get the LERP factor. So the LERP factor is going to be, I'm going to say factor minus current color dot position. And now if I divide this by range, this is going to give me the LERP factor. So here instead of this fact 3 I can do a mix and uh, I can do a mix between the current color, dot color, and the next color, dot color, with the LERP factor. And this hopefully should work. So if I come over here, I can do, uh, I can create an array of color stops. So this is going to be an array of three color stops. And I'm going to call this colors and we're going to set this to color stop, uh, put brackets here. And this is important, put parentheses to define your array. So here I'm going to say color stop and we're going to define our first point. So our first color stop will, will be black and it's positioned at zero. So uh, we're going to create a vec3 saying it's black and it's positioned at zero. So we're going to paste the exact same thing. Our second color stop will be green and the position of it is at 0.5. Our last color stop will be white. So this is going to be one and the position of it is going to be one. And let's remove this uh, comma here. And what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to create a vec3 called this final color. And we're going to call the color ramp function. We're going to pass this colors in. And the factor is going to be vuv.x, so just like here. And if we do this, now we can display it, so final color. Uh, now if we display this, let's see if we get any errors. We do, so uh, it's saying that, hmm, uh, I think something's wrong with our loop. So if I go up here, um, I'm going to see this. Well, uh, I think uh, this is uh, yelling at us because of a reason. So uh, here what we have is, you can check this out. If we loop over these points two by two, I can get this point and this point. This is going to be our first iteration. And I can get this point and this point. This is going to be our second iteration. And keep in mind, we have three points here. So our third iteration will be this point and the point after it, which doesn't exist. So probably that's what's causing this error. And I wanted to mention this uh, later in this video, but here we're going to do minus one from the colors dot length. And this is going to give us the correct result. As you can see right here, we don't get any errors and we get the exact same result that we want. Now there are a couple of problems here that uh, we're going to solve. So the first problem is if we change our color stops array, uh, we need to change this number. This is, this is super um, ridiculous, right? So every time you change this array, you not only should change this number, you should also change this number, which is ridiculous. We're going to fix that. And the other thing that is ridiculous here is um, we're checking these uh, in a weird way. And I'm going to show you why. So um, let's say that we have this color ramp and we want to check if a point is it's in between two points. So the simple thing that we can do is instead of doing this, we can check if our point is bigger than a color stop, right? So the position of a point uh, or a factor should be bigger than a color stop. And we can consider that color stop to be the value before it, the color stop before uh, the factor. And we don't even need to store this value, right? So uh, we can just remove this next color from our for loop. And what we can do is we can also remove this part and this is going to work. Um, so if I go back here, first of all, I think I'm using this somewhere. So, oh yeah, we have an error here. And if I fix that, and we're going to get the exact same thing because we don't need to check uh, if our point is uh, smaller than this value. We can just check if it's bigger than this value and uh, it's going to give us the correct index. So that's, uh, that's a very cool thing that we can do. But now, Here's the problem. So um, 
we need to pass in this number. This is super ridiculous. How do we fix this? Well, the only uh, way that I thought we could fix this is turning this function into a macro, which is what I used in my visualizer tutorial. So we're going to create a macro and we're going to handle this array length. So I'm going to define a macro and this is going to be called a color ramp. So the exact same thing. And it's going to take colors and it's going to take factor. All right. And we're going to open and uh, close uh, these parentheses. Now, a macro is different. Uh, keep in mind, we're going, to we're going to change this definition a little bit. But for now, uh, we can just copy and paste all of this code into here. And this is going to work. But now, uh, we need to actually modify this uh, thing because we don't have multi-line macros by default. So. In order to get multi-line macros, uh, we need to add a backslash at the end of each line, which is a little bit ridiculous, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a backslash at the end of each line. Now, I'm using a Vim here, uh, and uh, if you don't use a Vim, I'm going to show you how to do this. But a cool way that you can do this with Vim is you can uh, record certain sequences of movements. So uh, if that sounded ridiculous, uh, the simple way to show you is I can record, for example, F and uh, I can go into the end of the line. I can press a backslash. I can go back into command mode. I can go one down and I can end my recording. Now, what I can do here is I can see how many lines this is. So. This color ramp thing is uh, 16 lines of code. And now I can repeat that sequences of movements that I just did. So what I can do is I can press 16 and I can press at sign F. And this is going to put a backslash at the end of each line. Now, the problem here is uh, even if you do this with empty lines, I don't think it's going to work. I mean, we can try, but this looks a little bit weird. So we're just going to remove these that have um, empty lines. So we're removing the empty lines and we get this macro. Now, uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to change this uh, return because a macro doesn't return anything. So we need to actually provide a final color here and we need to write this value into our final color. So we're going to do it like this final color equals mix. And this is our final macro. I think we should be able to use this. So I'm going to come down here. And instead of returning this, I'm going to cut all of this code. And we're going to call our macro like this. And this time we need to actually pass in the final color as well. You can put a semicolon here if you want to. So uh, this is going to replace our code with this macro that you just saw. And it's going to give us the same functionality. But this time, the color's length is actually handled. So you don't need to change anything within your function. And with this, you're going to get this result, which is the thing that we want. And this macro will be in one of the links in the description. So you can find it right there. And that's going to be it for this tutorial, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in this type of content. I definitely enjoy making these videos. And um, it's, it's, re it's a really fun exercise to try to replicate some of these functionalities that Blender has. Now you can watch these two videos that YouTube is recommending if you want to. And on that note, I'll see you guys next time.